So, pebble shape and size, this is kind of where you went about and looked at uh, 30 pebbles, measured the length, measured the width, and then made a, a common judgment on its shape from the, the pebble roundness index. Alright? Again, when you're writing this up as one of your GMTs, if you choose to do it, always talk about the issues. Uh, one thing I noticed when I marked some of the, the kind of assignment drafts and what you've done, is a lot of you are just presuming everybody knows how to do it. Oh, we just collected pebbles and you know we just kind of judged them. How? A wee bit of detail missing from your GMTs. Almost treat it like you're writing a step-by-step -step idiot's guide on how to do the field work. So imagine you've done the field work, you know exactly what you're doing because you went and conducted it. Write it so that you're almost writing it for the, the S4 National Fives who are going to hopefully be doing this next year. Here is what we did. Here is why we did it. Here is how we did it. Step by step, you know, we took one ranging pole and put it at one end of the river. We went to the other end of the river and put the other ranging pole in. We measured it using a measuring tape. We looked at the measurements. We recorded what, like, almost like, simplify it down to that level. All right. Right. Pebble shape and size then. Yeah. So, pebble shape can be affected by freeze fall altitude aspect. That's your glaciation coming into it. All right. So, that's where you want to include that local hills were maybe affected by glaciation. Altitude, talk about when we looked up, we could see the V-shaped valley at the top end of the local hills. All right. Aspect, we know where this happens. North facing slopes. Yeah due to lack of direct sunlight, that kind of thing. Make sure you include that when you're talking about this. That's going to get you KU marks, knowledge and understanding, right? Attrition, again, you can go on and explain what attrition is and how it affects the pebbles. Geology, there's going to be a slide on looking at the types of rock that are actually present in uh, Click Manager and Oakle Hill, so you can talk about that. And then, Pebble size, again, can be affected by geology, attrition, and also the distance travelled. Basically, that's a simple one. The longer it's in the river, the more distance it's travelled, the more erosion can take place, the smaller the pebble's going to be. Brendan, you alright, eh? Is that what you're saying? Stay there. Alright. So, we'll go through kind of each one of these in a wee bit more detail. Again, like Morgan was just saying, Mr. Smalls actually posted this full PowerPoint up onto uh, Yama. It's also available on the SharePoint site as well. All right, so you can use this when you're writing your first draft over the holidays. All right, I'm not expecting you to produce an amazing first draft from memory. All right, use all the resources available to you. So. Angular materials, right? The shape of the pebbles, the shape is angular. Found in the upper course, hopefully your processed information backs that up. Yeah? Broken off through freeze fall, you can link it to the lapse rate and altitude. So bringing in your knowledge from glaciation there. All right? A lot of this isn't new to you. It's maybe how you apply it that's new, but you have the knowledge. All right? It's close to the source because it hasn't travelled very far, so they're going to be larger, yeah, going to be more angular, and the possibility of them being more resistant rock, so harder to erode, all right, and that's where you can link in the type of geology in Clackmannanshire to say that this is a more resistant rock or a less resistant rock, and how that's going to impact the shape, the size, and the rate of erosion on these rocks. All right, so the geology of Clackmannanshire then, right, two main types of rock, basalt and andesite, yeah, these are volcanic rocks essentially, they are about six and seven on the Mohs scale, and that scale goes from one to ten, measuring the hardness of rocks, ten being a diamond, the hardest rock that we know of. All right, so these are quite hard rocks, quite difficult to erode. How then 
Is that going to impact on your rates of erosion? How is it going to impact on the size and shape of the pebbles that you see? All right, and that's where you can link that in. Anybody got any questions about that? No? This map is quite good because it does kind of show you any of the other kind of types of rock. All right, but Oakle Hills, previously kind of volcano territory, so it's volcanic rock that's there. And if to it, you can talk about our basalt and andesite. Again, 6.7 6 on the most scale, so quite tough, quite hard rocks. So, again, rounded rocks. Hopefully our processed information backs up that we've seen a difference between the upper course and the middle course. So more rounded rocks, like the ones in the picture here, are going to be found in the middle course. Can be worn down through attrition, and again, go on to explain that. Explain every time you mention a process, explain it, so you're more likely to pick up the KU marks for explaining that process. You've got the processes of transportation in here as well, traction and saltation. Again, explain what they are and how they impact on the shape and size of the rock. All right, so if you're explaining it, traction is duh, 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 duh. this impacts the shape of the rock. Duh, 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 duh. Aye? So you can explain how it's going to impact. That's where you may link into analysis, particularly if you back that up with your process information. Right? 75% of the rocks in the middle course were rounded. This could be because of attrition. Explain. Yeah, this could be because of traction and saltation. Explain how they're going to round the rocks. Yeah, this is 25% more than the upper course, where 49 million percent or whatever was angular. This is because you see how you're going to link that all together, and you're linking it in your process information. That is your evidence to say my river matches this model. Here's how I know it does. Or my river doesn't match the model, and here's how it doesn't match it. And your process information is the evidence for that. All right? You can add in, like I was saying, distance travelled. It's travelled a further distance from the top of the hill to the middle course rather than just the upper course. So erosion has more time to take place, yeah, and the transport for longer. Yeah, so these things are happening over a longer period of time. We follow on that? Yeah, anybody got any questions so far? So, a large load, you know, we've seen uh, some of this, we've seen a bit of uh, glacial deposition as well, with these huge rocks at the side of this tiny wee stream, and you're thinking, how did they get there? So again, bring your knowledge of glaciation into that, and erratics, and sort of how these giant rocks don't actually fit the landscape of what's currently there. All right, so you have kind of two options. It could be moved by ice previously and has been dumped there, or during high phase of high discharge, these larger boulders could have made. So any kind of intense flooding that's happened could move these around. Uh, they would be moved by traction due to the weight, so kind of rolling along the bottom of the riverbed. Yeah, and again, if they've been particularly in the water, for, if you look at this one right in the middle, for a period of time, they could be smooth, yeah, very slidey. Have you ever kind of stood in a rock in the river and slid off it? Because it's so smooth. And that's because that erosion of the water is constantly happening, that hydraulic action, constantly attacking the rock in the river. Anybody got any questions? No questions? Everybody quite happy then? with the kind of four things we've discussed over the course of this week. Yeah? Right, what I want you to do now then is write a paragraph on pebble shape and size and what can impact it. And then if you've got any other of your paragraphs to finish off that are going to help you create your, your first write-up of it, that's what we need to be finishing off today. All right? And I'll give you a wee bit of time tomorrow. And then that's homework for the holidays. I would like a... A write up, a full write up done.